Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 334, a male case study for doctors and the general public. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 334, a male case study for doctors and the general public. This is a continuation of episode number 333. In the first episode, we talked about presentation of symptoms, uh, filling out the documents, sending it to Dr. Maupin, what her evaluation process is, and so on. What we want to do in this uh, presentation is go through the, the lab test that Dr. Maupin orders or has you order uh, so that when you send in your information in the online uh, new patient packet to be assessed, am I a candidate for testosterone replacement and bioidentical hormone replacement or am I not? And then she looks at all this data. She spends about an hour and a half looking at it before she contacts you to say, no, you're not really a candidate yet. Come back in five or seven years. Uh, or you might be a candidate, but first I want you to go to your other physician of whatever type and have this issue dealt with and then come see me. Or she says, yeah, looking at your information, then I also look at your labs. And she has a panel of like 15 different lab mm -hmm. tests that she has taken at uh, LabCo or LabCo request uh, and looks at that data. So what we're going to do today is go through and talk about what she sees when, when she sees the lab sheet come back. And you all, well, should get a copy from your physician or from the lab. And you can look at it. I look at mine. I have no idea what it says. Uh, it's like a little greater than That's and less you than have symbols me. and averages and normals. Uh, <laughs> and, and so then I come and say, well, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. And this, so, so this is what we're going to go through today. And the reason we're doing it is so that you as a potential uh, participant might know or so that your physician should know. Because the, one of the challenges in hormone replacement medicine is getting it more widely accepted. And it's really important that the, the simple process is just putting pellets in you. I mean, almost any physician or, or practitioner, nurse, nurse practitioner should be able to pop pellets in you. The question is being able to diagnose whether or not you need them and diagnose what the specific dosage needs to be and then follow up with appropriate troubleshooting yeah, uh, behaviors. That's, that's huge. So, so those are the critical ingredients. And whatever physician you go to for bioidentical hormone replacement needs to know these things. And Dr. Maupin does offer training programs that doctors all over the United States are recommended to her for training by the different labs that uh, produce the pellets that and they, get and, used. And, and the doctors uh, are always coming in going, you know, like, teach me how to do the pellets. Yeah. And then... Then, then they get into what's involved. They're then like, we oh. lecture to them, you know, yeah. eight to five, and they're like, whoa, 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 I can't think anymore. I yeah. can't remember anymore. And then we do it again the next day and, the, and another half day. Right. So it's really complicated. It is not just a straight walk to, oh, yeah, your testosterone's low. Let's check one test. And, and right. I mean, to do it right, you have to do this panel, understand it. We teach people how to do that and how to troubleshoot it. Well, how, it basically, how to take care of patients. It's, it's the same issue that we have. We've done podcasts about uh, ED drugs. And a lot of guys who begin to have trouble with erections go and get an ED drug from mm -hmm. their physician. And that's as much as I do. So I'm having a little concern about it. Can you give me some Viagra? Uh, what they don't understand, what their doctors may not make them understand, is that ED problems are like a five-year advance warning sign for heart attacks and strokes. And so you need to know whether or not that's part of what's going on uh, and, and actually, most of the men who go and get ED drugs stop taking them after three or four months because mm -hmm. they're not getting the responses they expected. They, they get the erection, but it still doesn't feel like what they expected they, to and feel they like. And they don't have the sex they don't have the leap. And they don't have testosterone. Which yeah. brings us into this conversation because that's one of the things that, that symptomatically people make reference to. I, I need to come in now because I'm not having a sex drive. Right. But you look then at the testosterone. So let, let's go through the lab. Right. And I, and I want to preface this by saying when I'm looking at um, 
when I look at hormone labs and I compare you to a normal, mm -hmm. the normals are not right on the lab sheet. In other words, here's, here's what I'm comparing you to. I need to compare a male to a young, healthy male's level of hormone because right. our hormones drop after 40. So not to the same age cohort. Not, you don't want to check I me against every other 70-year-old man. Yeah, then every other 70-year-old man, 90% of them will have low testosterone, free testosterone. Right. The rest are lucky. But, you know, but that means, so how is that going to tell me anything? Right. We do the same thing. It's called a, a T-score. When we have a T-score for bone density and we're looking for osteoporosis for men or women, we compare a woman of any age to a 29-year-old female. When we do that, we can tell if they have osteoporosis or osteopenia or they're normal. If we compared every 70-year-old woman to another 70-year-old woman, she'd be average and have, bone, and have a low bone density, and then we wouldn't be able to find the problem. That's what I do with hormones. So that's what I they get do when, the when they say, oh, it's just normal at your age to have broken bones. Right. You know, you fall down, but you break a bone. Yeah. Well, it may be common, and it may be a normal process of living when we live a long time. We need our hormones more because right. when we used to live to 50, we had low yeah. hormones for a few years and that was it, you know, and then basic, or we didn't, or men didn't, usually men out, didn't outlive their hormones, but yeah. now we do because we yeah. live to 90 and a hundred. Right. We just don't want to live poorly. So the idea is catch this early, treat the, the deficiency of testosterone and try to bring it to a 40, a 20 to 40 year old male or female. So that's what we're comparing you to. When I say normals, I'm looking at young, healthy normals. I'm not looking at what they put on your lab sheet. Okay. Cause when they, they put on your lab sheet, your age cohort, All basically. Right. So these then are specific data that have come in uh, this, as we explained in the last episode, this case study is actually a referral case study from a physician that Dr. Malcolm trained, who is trying to learn to do this appropriately. And so they have made a determination looking at the interview questions, the symptoms identified, seeing the patient and looking at the lab data. And then they send that to Dr. Malcolm and say, would you check me on this? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a test. They test themselves. It's how we do it in residency right. over and over and over again. We present a case to a doctor who's teaching us. Right. We say, and we give all the statistics of who, how old the patient is and all the, the symptoms. And then we go through lab data. Well, let me review that because if, if you have, if you haven't gone back and watched the previous episode, this is a 46 year old Caucasian male who's very stressed. He self reports. He's overweight, weighs 293 pounds. He's five foot, 10 inches tall. He has a body mass index of 43. His uh, complaints are that he lacks a sex drive. He has difficulty thinking clearly, and he has a professional uh, occupation. Uh, so that's a challenge. He has increased belly fat, thinning hair, he's depressed, and his joints ache. Right. So and he's not on any medication. And so he's all of these things are bothering him every day. Right. He's not taken, he's not, he doesn't want to use medication if he can just go back to normal with his hormones to fix this. Mm -hmm. That's what he's looking for. Right. Because he's already dieting and exercising. I mean, he's doing two of the three things that you recommend. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and and if, if his self-reporting is honest, he's doing them appropriately. Right. Uh, I mean, he's he's on the right diet. He knows enough to know what to eat, what not to eat, as long as he recognizes that he's eating these yeah. things. And he's so, not just mindlessly eating. So the eating. third leg then of that triad is to look at his blood tests. Right. And then make a determination. Is, is his estrone too high? Is his estrogen too high? Is his testosterone too low? Mm -hmm. Are there some other hormones kicking around thyroid, whatever? So the when, things that you check. When sugars. I look at things, I look, I first real, don't look in the order. When I'm talking to a patient, I go in the order that the lab gives me the test, which isn't my order. Right. But when I'm looking at a chart, I want to first look and see what their testosterone level is. Right. So in a male, a normal testosterone for a young, healthy male is a total testosterone over 400 and a free or active form of testosterone, which is all that really matters, mm -hmm. over 129. So, and and that was a Gino to Terra normal. That that's how I was trained, and right. it, it's it's played out to be after all these years to be the right normal. Men feel normal when they are over 129 free testosterone. Okay. So when the first step, uh, any age man, if he has 129 any age. free. Uh, then available for use. Then he should feel then he normal. Should feel, okay. So 
when I looked at this gentleman, he has a total testosterone of 229. Okay. He's, he's not even 50 yet. So that's very low. And so he's not making a lot of testosterone. Mm -hmm. So that's how you, the total is, are, is, are his testicles making testosterone? So he's not making a lot. And then when you look at what's active, mm -hmm. it's all bound up in a protein and he has very little active. It's only 51.5. So that's a very low free testosterone. So yes, his symptoms are related to his testosterone. Right. Now we have to look at what's, what's affecting his testosterone. So then we start looking at estrogen levels. So would, would you identify a dosage from that? If you're looking and it says 51.5 is the free testosterone and you know you need to get it up to 130 or so, mm -hmm. how much testosterone would you give? Interestingly enough on men, on, it's quite different than on women. On men, we have to, when we give any testosterone, even a tiny bit, it'll shut down their production. Okay. So I have to look so you have at, to replace the 51 I have to replace everything. Wow. I just have to figure out what he needs because it suppresses his own production no matter how much I give him. So okay. when people say, oh, give me just a little bit, I'm like, yeah. I can't. Right. I can't do that. I can do that with women, although there is a point where, you know, up to this point, you don't feel it. But not with men. So, so, so what you're telling me is he's got to get a whole new fleet of taxis. Right. Because a taxis, whole new fleet of taxis. Yeah. The analogy we used in, in the last episode to explain free testosterone versus total is like a guy being in a big city trying to catch a taxi. And every taxi cab that goes by is testosterone. And every taxi cab that goes by that already has an in-service sign with passengers in it, that's bound. It's not free. Yeah. It's all, uh, so it, you have it doesn't an work. empty cab. Yeah. And so what you're saying is if there are only 50 out of 400 cabs that mm -hmm. are empty, that's not enough to get you. Well, he doesn't even have 400. He has he 229. So not many taxis and most of them are filled up. And if he's going to get his testosterone replaced, he's going to get a whole new fleet of taxi cabs. Right. So I have to figure out for his weight and his activity level, which is considerable. He works yeah. out yeah. a lot. Yeah. And for his uh, stress level and for the other hormones, I have to decide how much testosterone this gentleman needs from square one. And then I have to look at the other things that affect testosterone okay. and, and how he feels. Other Symptoms. medical problems yeah. I have to fix right? because if he doesn't get those problems fixed, he won't lose weight, even with testosterone. So I have to fix several different things. So, so as much, personally, I know as much as you are aware about testosterone and estrogen balances, you are also aware about sugar balances. Right. I'm all talk, over your case about, about sugar balances. But this is not my case. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but talk about why yeah. that's important. Okay. So, so in general, if you have... Uh, if your blood sugar is high and you're a pre-diabetic or, or a diabetic, then you are you have gained more fat. That usually is what leads up to type 2 diabetes. So you've, you've gained more belly fat. And if you've been at that level for a certain period of time, you've also depleted your stores of insulin. I mean, first, first what happens pre-diabetic-wise is that you increase your insulin to to actually take care of all the fat you've made. And every more insulin makes more fat, more insulin makes more fat. So so basically you've used you use up and tire out your pancreas and then as your insulin drops your blood sugar goes up and up and up. So you make more and more fat that way. After you're a true diabetic, it's hard to pull you back from the edge right. by treating your insulin we call it insulin resistance. This is complicated. So insulin resistance, as your t insulin goes up, it is what insulin does is it piggybacks blood sugar into your cells. So after you eat food, it becomes blood sugar, and the blood sugar is carried by insulin into the cell to make energy. Well, people who are pre-diabetic, as they get more and more fat, they become more and more insulin resistant, which means the the uh, insulin and the sugar bounce off the cells. Basically, they can't get in like they used to. They bounce off the cells and they make more fat. So you're making food, you're eating food, you're, you're making fat instead of energy. So you're tired and you're also gaining fat. So it's this kind of never ending cycle. Well, then fat makes estrogen. Estrogen binds up your testosterone. They're all tied up it's together. It's all a vicious spiral. Right. So if I don't treat your insulin resistance or your prediabetes or your diabetes, then I'm really not treating you appropriately because I've, 
I'm missing this whole this whole other so, disease. So this is like the Gordian knot. You have to find the right thread to untangle the knot. Well, I have to find several threads. Well, then you then you do it like uh, Alexander the Great did. You just pull out his sword and cut the knot. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no, actually, that's, that's I do. True story. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's one of those. That's one of the reasons I I like to train other physicians is yeah. to train them to do it right, to actually treat the patient and make them healthier, and not just make them uh, happy because they've got some testosterone. Because that that thrill wears off after a while if you're not well. Yeah. Well, you you have eleven data points on this list. Before we run out of time, which ones <laughs> are are you need to spend more time talking about Okay, so I'll, I'm going to talk about lipids for just one second. Okay. That's short. All right. Mo we do a lipid panel. So if somebody's, um, I don't really look at total cholesterol. That doesn't matter because the good cholesterol, HDL, is incorporated into total. So it really, when you have a high total, it could be because you have a lot of good cholesterol. So I just look at LDL, and LDL is the bad cholesterol. It should be less than 130. If it's higher than 130, I put people on testosterone pellets, it lowers the LDL cholesterol. Okay. So I'm looking for that to happen. I say, we're going to treat that and then repeat it and see what happens. Then triglycerides is, is um, included in the, in the uh, lipid panel. Triglycerides are completely different. They're from sugars. People who, eat, who either have a genetic propensity to have high triglycerides, sometimes you can't do anything about it no matter what you eat, but most people just eat too much sugar in, in the American diet, and that they're pre-diabetic when they have too much triglycerides. Well, in the American diet, there's sugar in everything. I mean, you don't even know when you're eating. Yeah. Aspirin is like 95% sugar. They put a <laughs> so sea salt. It's a binder. Because it's... Yeah. And well, they because put it's the, sour. Sea salicylic acid in take it. it. And so you're, you're popping sugar pills when you take aspirin. Right. I mean, it's it's in so many things. But it, so our diet and our life has too much sugar in it. Right. And so so many of us have high triglycerides. Well, that, that causes you to have atherosclerosis as well. So I treat that differently than most people. I treat it like I would treat prediabetes, high triglyceride with metformin, which well, is the drug we use for prediabetes. Metformin and Victoza are new drugs that are available for treatment. Well, metformin Metformin's is old. not. It's an old drug. It's an old, cheap drug, and it works great yeah. for prediabetes. But Victoza, in my more difficult cases, I have to use Victoza, which is an injectable. But many times, I can get people down to weight, mm -hmm. and then they can stop taking those. Right. Now, many people can't. So it's it, it's we have to just trial and error. I don't know who can stop taking it and who can, who has to maintain. Uh, you retest their, their tri triglycerides. You right. take another lipid panel and, mm -hmm. and it tells you we're okay now or we're not. We do that in three months on women, usually four months on men. So um, when we place testosterone pellets for men, they usually last six months. Mm -hmm. For women, four. So we test women sooner than men. All right. Uh, then we look at thyroid. Because thyroid has a lot of cross symptoms, fatigue right. and um, hair I loss. Was thinking hair and, loss. Yeah, so some swelling, so a lot of things that happen when you don't have enough free testosterone or too much estrogen. So I look at thyroid, and you have to remember the normals. The normals aren't actually right on, on the, the lab on the lab sheet. So right. for men, the TSH is is right. It should be less than four point five. But when we look at the T3 and the T4, T3 is the active is the active form of thyroid. It has a, it has an improper range. So just remember that you should be from three to four point five on T3, and if you're not, then usually your thyroid's not uh, producing enough thyroid to keep you warm and keep your body temperature up. And T4 should be 0.9 to 1.4. And if that's, if you're there, then great. So I, I replace thyroid based on the actual thyroid hormones and, and basal body temperature, the temperature with an or an oral temperature before you get out of bed, men should be over 98, 98 or above. So if you take your temperature before you get out of bed, thyroid controls that. And if, you're, if your thyroid's equivocal, then I have you take your temperature. If you're cold in the morning, then you don't have enough thyroid. That's an old-fashioned way to test it, but it works. Or to see if you're pregnant for women. No. Take that basal temperature every morning. Yeah, that's, or ovulating, actually. Yeah. <laughs> see, you remember all that. So, um, so this gentleman had a normal thyroid right. and no symptoms of low thyroid. So... Which is a positive for him. Again, it's, it's indicative very, 
good. He's coming in at the right time to get the right issue treated. Right. And yeah. and he's not he wasn't really looking for thyroid. He was looking he was looking for male hormones. He was right of his own diagnosis. Right. Uh, then I look at metabolic profile, which has your blood sugar in it. Should be less than 99. Uh, up to 130, you're in prediabetes. Then after 130, you're in diabetes. So there's some other tests I can do if you're actually above 130. But I'll treat anything above 99 um, if if triglycerides are high or if there are symptoms of hypoglycemia. I'll treat that with metformin. Okay. Metformin is an easy drug, and it does help people lose weight who have insulin resistance, high blood sugars. Mm -hmm. Then in that same panel, there's your kidneys and your liver because your kidneys and liver are the trash collectors of your body and they get rid of all your toxins and, and they get rid of your hormones when you're done using them. So I need to make sure that the liver and the kidneys are both functioning normally. In general, I see a lot of fatty liver signs. The, the liver enzymes, ALT, AST, are elevated. Now, if that's the case, we can either send you for an ultrasound to prove that you have fatty liver, or we can treat you with metformin again. Metformin sounds like a miracle drug. Yeah, it, it seems to be. They call it, I mean, they're now actually calling it the fountain of youth. Yeah. Because so many, so many people age quicker because they have insulin resistance or diabetes, and it's treating that, and it's keeping people alive in a healthy way. Right. So that's always excellent. So and it's, it's an old generic drug that's fairly inexpensive. Right, it is. Yeah. So this gentleman had an elevated ALT, so I suggested that if he's drinking a lot of alcohol, which he didn't express on his, on his um, questionnaire, that he should stop. <laughs> that's easier said than done. Yes. And for most people, and then... Um, he should take metformin if he's not, and that should clear that up. Some people just want to repeat it, and that's okay, too. You can repeat it in the next lab. If it's still elevated, then uh, then you treat. Okay. So that's a cautious way about it. Growth hormone's imp important because IGF-1 is how we test growth hormone. Growth hormone is usually low in my patients who have low testosterone, there's lots of reasons to have a low growth hormone. Usually it means that you're, you have low muscle mass and high fat mass. It also means that you're not repairing your cells well. You're not going to recover from surgery well. But it's a real challenge for physicians because the FDA really restricts your ability to use growth hormones. So right. you have something else that historically at least will, will spur your own body's production of growth hormone. It's called right. a... a Samorlin. Yeah, and it's, called, it's a secre secretagogue. Yeah, it's a secretagogue. It makes your um, pituitary secrete growth hormone. Okay. But in general, testosterone does the first step. When we give testosterone in pellet form only, it stimulates growth hormone in people who have not had damage to their pituitary. If you've had head, head injuries, yeah. then it's not going to go up. I check it later. If it doesn't go up, then I have to treat it with a secretagogue because you won't feel well unless you, your growth hormone comes up. Right. But you can also make your growth hormone come up by make, by building muscle and losing fat if you have an intact pituitary. Okay. Okay? So his is low. It's 113. It sh and that's another thing. They don't have the healthy normal there. But healthy normal is 150 to 350 of, of IGF-1. That's how we measure growth hormone. Estrone is, is one of the things that I find to be a test that nobody else does. Estrone's old man estrogen. The more belly fat you have, the more estrone you have. So um, estrone often can be suppressed by testosterone. But if we need a fast jump start, we use the drug Arimidex, which is uh, an inhibitor of the enzyme that makes testosterone into estrogen. Okay, so some yeah. testosterone suppresses estrone but it also can be made into estrone. Mm -hmm. So we like to block that. I know this is complicated. We, we like just, to block the, the estrone. That, yeah. That could be made. We just make it fast. We right. get this going faster. So that helps people lose their belly fat faster, gain muscle faster, get a result faster. Okay. So we use that orally or we put it in a pellet, T testosterone arimidex pellets. We have those and we often use those. All right. um, DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. It's good and bad. If it's really high, it can stimulate the, the um, baldness and it can stimulate your prostate to be big. 
DHT, so in that way it can be bad, but if you have a low DHT, you don't have a sex drive, you can't make muscle, you're miserable. So we have to get you into this 25 to 75 range yeah. so that you can feel normal. His is low right. because it comes, it's, it's a byproduct of testosterone. Right. So we want him to... To make is, some is DHT. DHT is going to be right. So right. you can't make it if you don't have it. And right. one of the things I find in young men who are taking um, Propecia, Propecia is a is a an enzyme blocker that actually stops the production of DHT. Well, they they have great hair then. They have no testosterone. I mean, they they don't have a lot of sex drive. They don't have a lot of body hair. They you know they feel tired. They can't make muscle. So why would they be taking it? They're taking it because their dermatologist gave it to them because they want to keep their hair from falling out. Yeah. Well, as in everything, there's a perfect level. Right. So we want you in the perfect level. We don't want you high or low. So I have to manage that when yeah. people come in and say, you can't take as much. As Would you rather go bald or have sex? Yeah, really. Right. I mean, that's a question. That is the question. And um, the, la the last is a vitamin D level. So if your vitamin D level is less than 40, then we treat you with high-dose vitamin D. And we have vitamin D 5,000 units in, in the office. We also use K2, which is vitamin K2, which also helps you build, um, it, excuse me, it actually uh, helps you build uh, bone. It also helps you get the calcium out of your blood vessels that cause atherosclerosis. D, K2, and also B12? And B12 is, is something that most of us stop absorbing from our stomach as we age. And so we give B12. If you're on metformin, you should always be on B12. But if you're not on metformin, then you sh and you seem to be, I mean, we can check B12 levels too. But B12 is something you can take sublingually under the tongue. And so it doesn't have to go through your stomach if you're not absorbing it. So we use something. We use the under the tongue B12, and so, that works. So this is what she does all day. This is what she does. <laughs> I know, and I'm sure you're all talking to herself, <laughs> looking at paperwork, going through. Well, well I should do this. I do this. this with the patients. You, you do, as and well. when they come in, you set them down. And and it's what she does with the doctors that she trains, so that they learn to do these things and be more comfortable with all this data. Bioidentical hormone replacement therapy is a coming wave. It's getting more credibility. It's getting more widespread. More and more physicians are beginning to say, well, you know what? I need to take a look at this. But when they take a look at it, it's more than just giving you testosterone. You, you have to know how to diagnose properly, where the imbalances are, where the blockages seem to be, and you have to know how to troubleshoot that. And that's why we spent time today and last week doing this case study example, because these are the literal issues and questions that fill her day with all the patients that she sees. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.